Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillah Rabbil Alemin Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain Nahmadullah Ta'ala Nastafir ve şerru an La ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerika la Neşhedü anna seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve sebette bi khulafe raşin mahadin min ba'di ve zemmeti ala tahkik Khususun mihra alameti khulafe rasil ala tahkik Umar al-Mu'minin Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar, Usman ve Ali ve Ala Bakr, Sabet Tabi'in Ridvanullah Ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun Yitakullah Ta'ala Ve te'inna Allah hamel lezine Tukal lezine hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Salatu ve selamu ala Eşrafil Anbiya Mürselin Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin Ve alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in All praises are due to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of the universes All praises is due to Allah we praise Him, ask only Him for help, and ask Him alone for guidance and His mercy. We have faith in Him only, do not disbelieve in Him, despise those who deny Him. I bear witness that there is no Lord but Allah, He is alone, He has no equal, and I bear witness that Muhammad wasalam, is His servant and His prophet whom Allah sent for guidance, the true way, light sincere advice and wisdom at a time when the delegation of prophets to this world had ended knowledge was decreased the majority had deviated from the straight path time was at its end the day of judgment was near and the world had fulfilled its appointed time as recorded by imam qurtubi the first khutbah of the holy prophet Ya Allah, bless our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who opened what was closed, who is the seal of what came before, the one who makes truth victorious by the truth, the guide to the straight path, then bless his family and his companions as fits their greatness. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar al-Faruq, Hazrat Usman al-Ghani and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya yuhal mu'minun, O believers, 
Oh you who say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Ya Ummati Muhammad The time has come for us to leave our heedlessness and wake up to the inheritance of Islam The time has come for us to wake up to the reality that we are living in the Ahir Zaman and to rise to the occasion that we are in The time has come for the Ummat to free itself from the chains of shaitan and dajjal and once again become the servants of Allah and his messenger. O believers, this is the era that 124,000 prophets warned their ummats about. This is the age that the Holy Prophet ﷺ warned us about. This is the time that the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, there will come a time when holding on to your iman will be like holding on to hot coals. Meaning that everything is going to be against to the faith, the faith of the Prophet and the faith of the Sahabi Kiram, the faith of the Ahlil Bayt and the faith of those who follow them. Everything is going to be pushing you to drop that faith. Everything will be pushing you to adopt a different kind of faith a new kind of faith but we cannot drop it so when believers hear this hadith sharif they must ask themselves what is attacking my faith and how can i defend myself from that attack rasulullah is telling us about one of the biggest fitness of the ahir zaman saying there shall come upon people years of deceit years of trickery lying in which the liar will be believed the truthful ones disbelieved the ones who betray the treacherous ones trusted the trustworthy ones considered treacherous and the ruaibida will speak out it was said who are the ruaibida he والسلام, said, the lowly, contemptible ones who will speak out about public affairs. And the scholars of Arabic are saying that the word Ruaybida means the people who are lower than low, more worthless than worthless. When we understand the hadith, we can understand exactly what is happening to us today, what is happening to the ummah today. The liars are believed, the truthful ones are disbelieved, the treacherous ones, the betrayers, they are trusted and people think the trustworthy ones are betrayers and the lowest of the low, the most useless people speak and they decide about the most important matters that concerns everyone. The Holy Prophet والسلام, is describing too the Facebook fitna social media and internet Islam that has popped up today today we are finding that Muslims they are taking their religion 100% from the internet they are taking their religion from the Imams and scholars and Ustaz who scroll into their Facebook feed anybody who has a nice video with good production that person becomes their teacher Anybody who speaks sweet words that makes them feel good, they follow them. Anybody who talks in a way that they think is cool, it is fashionable, they take that person's teaching. And with this kind of thinking, we find that the Muslims are falling into the lowest station. Never mind if the ones who are speaking, they have no knowledge. Never mind if the ones who are speaking, they have no teacher. Never mind if the ones who are teaching are doing the worst actions in secret, and is made public never mind if the ones who are speaking they are cursing to the prophets never mind if the ones who are speaking do not even have the light of iman in their hearts today's muslims only look to see is he a funny imam does he smile and make me happy i like his words doesn't matter if they're cliche and they're corny i will follow him Believers must wake up. For us to understand this fitna, we have to understand the origins of this fitna. We have to understand that these 
useless people who are pretending to be people of knowledge. They did not come out of nowhere. They have a history and they have a lineage. And when we trace that lineage, we're going to find the horns of shaitan. Hazrat Ibn Umar radiallahu an is narrating a hadith -e sharif saying, Holy Prophet wasalam, he prayed, Ya Allah, bless our Sham and our Yemen. The people said, our Najd as well, the Prophet again said, Ya Allah, bless our Sham and Yemen. They said again, our Najd as well. On that the Prophet said, there will appear earthquakes and afflictions and from there will come out the side of the horn of shaitan. On another occasion, Holy Prophet looked towards Najd and said, Behold, fitna would appear from this side, from where the horns of shaitan would appear. If we trace back the lineage of these Facebook Imams and Google Ustaz and Sheikhs, we're going to find that it goes back to Najd. We're going to find out that these people come from the fitna that came out from Najd. The fitna of Abdullah ibn Abdul Wahhab. What is Wahhabism? It's very simple. Wahhabism is rejecting 1400 years of the tradition of Islam and thinking that you know better. Wahhabism is thinking that you are the most knowledgeable creature on the face of the earth and that you will go directly to Allah and you will take directly from Allah. Wahhabism is thinking that you do not need a guide because you are greater than any guide and any guide is still a man and their only guide is Allah. And Hazrat Bayazid Bistami Sir told us the reality of those with no guides when he said, the one who has no shaykh, his shaykh is shaitan. This Wahhabism, this pride and this arrogance, it has infected everyone today. It is not just those who say, I'm Salafi, who have this disease today. This disease has gone so deep that it is beyond any labels. There are Sunnis who are Wahhabis. There are Shis who are Wahhabis. There are Sufis who are Wahhabis. Meaning, they reject tradition. They make up their own idea. They reject what has come down to them from their sheikhs. And they think that they are the most intelligent and spiritual creatures who have ever walked the face of the earth. And they too will take directly from Allah and His Prophet. They are the inheritors of the arrogance of shaitan when he said, I am better than Adam. And he refused to make such them. They refuse to submit to anyone. They refuse to submit to the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in this religion when he said, Obey Allah, obey the messenger and your rightly guided leaders. Sadaqallahu lazim. And so we see that anything that has to do with authority, anything that has to do with connecting back to the golden chain, going back to the Holy Prophet, wasalam, they reject. They reject taking blessings, the baruk, through the Holy Prophet They look at this holy turban, his holy cane, his holy sandals, and they say, these are just old things. They cannot do anything for us. They say this when the Sahaba Kiram used to run to even rub the wudu water of Holy Prophet on their faces, to respect and to love anything connected to Rasulullah It is a requirement of faith. Qadi Iyad is saying in his Shifa, it is from the respect due to Rasulullah that one gives reverence to all things connected with him. All places he stayed in Mecca and Medina, the things he touched, and all things that are known connected to him. But these ones they hate to accept that Holy Prophet والسلام, is higher than them. That is why they even have the jahil arrogance to say these Dajjalic ones who say even Muhammad needed to accept Islam from Jibril. Even Muhammad 
converted to Islam alayhi salatu wasalam. Hasha, astaghfirullah. And these are the scholars of today. And there are millions who follow them. These millions have also made them rich. And these ones have no teacher that they are accountable to because they are taking directly from Allah. And when you corner them with their knowledge, they're going to say, well, I'm not a scholar. I just love this religion. Do you understand the fitna that is making? Their mouths will be sealed and their faces will be blackened by those words. Allah has already identified their games and written their ending in the Holy Quran. He is saying in Surah Al-Tawbah, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Don't they know that whoever opposes Allah and His Messenger, that for him is the fire of hell, where he will stay forever? That is the great disgrace. The hypocrites are afraid that a surah will be sent down about them, showing them what is really in their hearts. Say, Make fun as you wish. Indeed, Allah will expose that which you fear. And if you question them, Ya Muhammad, they will declare, we were just talking and playing. Say, was it at Allah and His signs and His messenger that you were mocking? Make no excuse. You have disbelieved after your belief. If we forgive a party of you, a party of you we shall punish because they have been guilty. Sadaqallah Lazim. These are the hypocrites who now people are calling the thinkers and the leaders of the Ummah. These are the ones who are going against 1400 years of ijma, 1400 years of consensus, 1400 years of authority that has been passed down in Islam. These are the ones who reject that authority they reject that authority continues in Islam after the Holy Prophet ﷺ. These are the ones who reject the friends of Allah, the awliya Allah. They say there is no such thing as a friend of Allah. There is no such thing as people we have to follow after the Prophet ﷺ. There is no such thing as tariqat. There is no such thing as dargah. There is no such thing as bayat. They do not see that the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is tariqat. They do not see that his Darul Arqam in Mecca and Masjid al Nabawi in Medina, they were his dergahs. They do not see that every companion gave bayat to follow his every command. They don't see that Holy Prophet ﷺ described the friends of Allah and he described their murids when he said in his hadith, O oh people, listen to this, understand it, and know it. Allah has servants who are neither prophets nor martyrs, and whom the prophets and martyrs yearn to be like them due to their seat and their closeness in relation to Allah. One of the Bedouin Arabs who came from among the most isolated of people twisted his hand at the prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, people from humankind who are neither prophets or martyrs and yet the prophets and the martyrs, they yearn to be like them due to their closeness in relation to Allah, describe them for us. The Prophet's face showing happiness at the Bedouin's question and he said, they are of the strangers from this and that place. They frequent this or that tribe without belonging to them. They do not have family connections among themselves. They love one another for Allah's sake. They are of pure intent towards one another. On the day of resurrection, Allah will place for them pedestals, stations of light upon which He will make them sit and he will turn their faces and clothes into light. On the day of resurrection, the people will be terrified, but not those ones. They are Allah's friends, upon whom fear comes not, nor 
do they grieve? And yet, today's internet Facebook fitness scholars are denying these friends of Allah. Let them deny. Allah is the defender of his friends. He is saying in a hadith Qudsi, whoever is an enemy of my wali, I declare war on him. Let those who hate the awliya Allah prepare for war from the Lord of heavens. So the Muslims today, they are trusting the liars and disbelieving the most trustworthy ones, fulfilling the hadith of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. And today, we're even finding that Muslims are taking their religion from a new breed, a new kind of liars, academic scholars, who do not even believe in Islam, but Muslims are taking their religion from them. Those who have not even said the shahadat, who do not believe in Sayyidina Muhammad who reject the truth of the Quran, Muslims are going to these ones and they are listening. Listening to those educated in the West who are studying the Hadith and Quran and the sciences of Islam, heedless Muslims. How can you dare to take your faith from those who have no faith? How can you learn Islam from those who have not accepted Islam? But this is the level that we have sunk into. These are the lowest times that have been seen by mankind. And these are the worst times that have been seen by this Ummah. Because never in 1400 years since the time of the Prophet ﷺ, until now, never have you seen Muslims taking their religion from non-Muslims, from unbelievers. It is only in these times that we find that deceit and that fitna. Because these are all signs of the last day. These are all signs of the biggest fitna maker, Dajjal. Muslims must understand this. If we do not understand what Dajjal is, that Dajjal is here, how will we defend against him? We just passed the urs of the greatest shaykh, Hazrat Muhyiddin ibn Arabi Qadazlawsir. People of understanding, listen to his words to understand how dangerous the situation is. He said, when the Jews join forces with the Christians and they rain fire on the towers, when the further masjid, Quds, is orphaned and when power is in the hands of the prostitute when a fire in the gulf blazes and the power in the hijaz makes alliance with the chiefs of the disbelievers when in the war of the stars the capitals perish in the oil of the gulf when Yajuj and Majuj plunge forth headlong and cry, O oh, rivers of blood, seethe, then you can say to the blind one, to the Dajjal, arise, the time to appear has come. We ask Allah's protection from the fitna of Dajjal. Muslims must wake up and run to safety. Run from the fake scholars who are calling to the way of shaitan. Run away from those who have taken shaitan as their shaykh. Run away from those who are calling you to the hellfire. Run to those who are beloved to Allah. Our shaykh, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi, Rabbani Qadazallahu Sir, is saying that flood of fire is about to happen. Those who are seeing are screaming and crying, saying, come back, turn around. Whatever you are, leave your egoistic way of lifestyle. Go to sajda, ask for forgiveness. You may find safety. There is no other safety. The flood of fire is about to happen. Mankind is running still wild, just like the people of Nuh salam, And this is going to take the whole globe. The whole world is going to sink in it. 
no safety. Safety only comes with those people that they are protected and they are holding tightly to the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying to us, safety at that time is my Ahlul Bayt. Run to them, be around them. They are like the ship of Nuh ﷺ. You are going to find safety. There is no other safety. If we take those words seriously, it is very serious. It is up to you. If you are taking it seriously, or you are just putting it through one ear and bringing it out from the other side. But whoever believes, whoever runs, whoever tries, they may find safety. Whoever doesn't believe, there is no safety for them. We are, Rabbi, we are asking for protection. We are asking to be in safety. We are asking you to keep us with your friends, with the ones that you love. We are asking you to protect us from the fitna of Dajjal. Ya Rabbi, for the sake of the ones you love, and we are asking you to be pleased with us. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 Allah, 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 Allah,